there is amongst those who have made a study of the last days much debate about where this rebuilt Babylon uh, that the scriptures foretell uh, and prophesy about, where will it be? Will it be in ancient Babylon? Some uh, Bible teachers have thought that even the United States is this, this Babylon. Well, I want to uh, today uh, try and just present what I believe is a possible scenario for Babylon. Now, I want to hasten to say that I'm not dogmatic about this, but I am interested in this because what I see happening seems to fit with what's happening. <laughs> that might sound like a play on words, but uh, let me begin by listing some facts related to Babylon and its potential place in the possible fulfillment of related Bible prophecy, uh, speaking of Babylon. First of all, Babylon is mentioned some 300 times in the Bible. Only Jerusalem is mentioned more. There's much in the scriptures about Babylon. As many of you probably know, Babylon is located in modern-day Iraq, of all places. It's actually uh, about 60 miles south of Baghdad, which is the capital of modern-day uh, Iraq. And before Saddam Hussein was uh, executed, uh, he was rebuilding uh, Babylon. Uh, actually, he believed that and even stated that uh, he was the reincarnation of one King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, some of the bricks uh, were uh, made in the rebuilding of uh, Babylon, which he didn't complete. He was using oil dollars to, to do it. But uh, on one side of the brick, he would have Nebuchadnezzar's name, and on the other side of the brick, he would have his name. Uh, if you were ever to travel to Iraq, uh, you would see pictures of Saddam Hussein and King Nebuchadnezzar. He saw himself as the reincarnation of King Nebuchadnezzar and took it upon himself to rebuild Babylon. So uh, Babylon is a physical place, it is a literal place, it is a historical place, and potentially it is a prophetic place in God's prophetic uh, program. Babylon was one of the seven wonders of the world uh, noted for its hanging gardens, which is interesting because it's believed that the Garden of Eden was actually in what we would call modern-day Iraq or the plains of Shinar. So it would stand to reason. By the way, for those of you uh, who have never been to the Middle East, the Middle East is beautiful. The Middle East is beautiful, or at least it was. <laughs> I think of my birthplace, Beirut, Lebanon. You know, Beirut, Lebanon was called the Paris of the Middle East. You could actually go snow skiing in the morning, not that you would want to, <laughs> and you could go surfing in the afternoon. It was uh, a beautiful before it became war-torn by the uh, Civil War. But this was a beautiful uh, area, and Babylon was a magnificent uh, empire in its day. And again, now uh, it's still uh, on the table, if I can say it that way, uh, for the potential of having it be rebuilt. In Revelation, Babylon is described as the empire of man. It's also been called the cradle of civilization. I don't know how many of you that get all those emails, you know, those little uh, informational emails, but a lot took place in uh, Iraq, modern-day Iraq. It wasn't called naturally Iraq then, but that particular uh, area is very rich with history. But we do see in the scriptures a Babylon, uh, chapters 17 and chapters uh, and 18 in the book of Revelation are about actually two Babylons. In chapter seven, it's an ecclesi uh, 17, it's an ecclesiastical or religious uh, Babylon. And in chapter 18, it's an economic uh, or commercial Babylon. In chapter 17, it's called Mystery Babylon. In chapter 18, it's called Great or Babylon the Great. In chapter 17, it's likened unto a harlot, and in 18, a great city. 
in chapter 17, it's uh, on seven hills, which is Rome, known to be the city of seven hills. In chapter 18, it seems to be a coastal uh, city. In chapter 17, it's destroyed in the middle of the tribulation. And in chapter 18, it's destroyed at the end of the tribulation. See, Babylon has never been destroyed. It's only been conquered and laid ruin. Both the prophets Isaiah in chapters 13 and 14, and then the prophet Jeremiah in chapters 50 and 51, record the prophecies of Babylon's final destruction once it's finally rebuilt. Now, again, heretofore, Babylon has never been, uh, you know, destroyed. It's, again, been conquered, but it's actually still, to some degree, inhabited. Uh, actually, our military <laughs> is there uh, right now. It's a strategic uh, place. It's a protected uh, place, but the scriptures and the prophecies seem to indicate that it will be rebuilt, and even some believe that not only will it be rebuilt, but that this newly rebuilt Babylon will be the headquarters of a new world capital, uh, headquartering a new world order, if you will, because of not only its geography, but its history, which I think is what gives it its place in Bible prophecy. There is a marriage of sorts between history and prophecy. The more I understand Bible history, the more I'll understand Bible prophecy. Uh, Dr. Henry Morris, uh, 22 years ago, in his uh, book, The Revelation Record, had this to say. Very interesting. He said, Computer studies of the Institute for Creation Research have shown, for example, that Babylon is very near the geographical center of all the Earth's land masses. It is within navigable distances of the Persian Gulf and is at the crossroads of the three great continents of Europe, Asia, and Africa. Thus, there is no more ideal location anywhere for a world trade center, a world communication center, a world banking center, a world educational center, or especially a world capital. The greatest historian of modern times, Honor Arnold Toynbee, used to stress to all his readers and hearers that Babylon would be the best place in the world to build a future world cultural metropolis. This is 22 years ago. Uh, two years ago, the Herald Tribune had this uh, headline, UNESCO intends to put the magic back in Babylon. Let me just read you a few excerpts from uh, this uh, article. In this ancient city, it is hard to tell what are ruins and what is just ruined. Crumbling mud brick buildings some 2,500 years old look like smashed sandcastles at the beach. Babylon, the city with the million-dollar name, has paid the price of war. It has been ransacked, looted, torn up, paved over, neglected, and roughly occupied. But Iraqi leaders and UN officials, interesting, are not giving up on it. They are working assiduously to restore Babylon, home to the Hanging Gardens, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. They want to turn it into a cultural center and possibly even an Iraqi theme park. The UN, <laughs> I'm not going there. I, I'll prefer Disneyland. Thank you very much. The, <laughs> the UN Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization is pumping millions of dollars into Babylon. It has even printed a snazzy brochure to give to wealthy donors. Cultural tourism could become Iraq's second biggest industry after oil, explained Philip Delange, a United Nations official helping with the project. One day, millions of people will visit Babylon, one said. I'm just not sure anybody knows when. That's because nobody knows the day or the hour. <laughs> 